Great, so I'll be chairing this session. As um, many of you know, um, Alessandro De Vita, that was um, a very dear friend and dear colleague uh, to many of us, uh, was, uh, was killed uh, um, in October, October 2 uh, of uh, just this past year. Uh, while going back to London, Alessandro was a professor at King's College in London and uh, also a professor here at the University of Trieste. Um, so several of us uh, will be giving uh, uh, very brief uh, talks uh, with a little bit of a personal element uh, and especially a scientific element uh, just to show some of his uh, scientific results uh, to all of you. Um, I read something very nice about him in the few days after his death. Uh, someone said uh, uh, Alessandro was uh, wired uh, differently uh, from most of us and I think we all think so. I mean, he was really uh, different and uh, I try to list uh, here something of his, uh, of his quality, of his intelligence, of his knowledge, imagination, and uh, his uh, mischievous uh, and deeply generous uh, spirit. So I'll just spend uh, two or three minutes. Uh, um, Ario yesterday has broken new ground on as far uh, as you can go back in time. So a few pictures. Uh, this is uh, uh, Stefano De Gironcoli's wedding. So Sandro is here. You probably recognize Francesco. You probably don't <coughs> recognize me. And this is uh, Alessandro Variola. Eh? It was a wedding. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Stefano's wedding. Uh, another one, sorry for this. Uh, this was for uh, Alfonso Baldereschi, uh, 60th birthday. Actually, uh, Alessandro was uh, a student of Alfonso Baldereschi just uh, uh, 30 years ago in January 1989. He started his uh, laurea work up here on the second floor. Uh, everything was just the same uh, apart from the computers and the VT100 uh, terminals. Uh, you see also here uh, Christina, Sandra's wife, uh, and here appears also Sandro Scandolo, Alf Alfredo Pasquarello, Alessandro Satta, and, uh, uh, and Silvia Rubini. Uh, this is one of the last pictures that I have of him in Clare Court uh, with Carla Molteni and uh, uh, with Caterina Serra. And I decided to give you something uh, uh, somehow personal, but just to show you uh, a little bit of something between the two of us. It was a friendship uh, uh, for 40 years. Uh, and. Um, and emails uh, for uh, 30 years. Uh, oh, apologies. I, uh, I, I skipped something also very precious to me. And this was uh, uh, a rush uh, this summer uh, celebrating. Uh, we were in London. I visited King's College for a month. He had just been promoted professor. And I'm really grateful he decided to really open uh, all his most precious bottles. And uh, we had uh, a great day together again uh, with uh, Christine here, that is uh, Sandro's wife and uh, Arash's wife and daughter. And this is an email, as I said, apologies if it's uh, personal, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight uh, uh, into Sandro. So it's the email for uh, uh, when I wrote uh, for his uh, uh, last birthday in, uh, in March. Uh, I was worried that uh, he didn't reply to me, and so I, I, I wrote to him uh, checking uh, that uh, uh, we weren't uh, in the situation in which uh, only one of us uh, was dead, because I think if both we were dead, we could still uh, communicate. And Sandro replied saying, uh, uh, "Is not dead, he's just, uh, just buried. And then he went on, on one of his uh, uh, literary uh, outreach. Uh, this was Borges, dear to both of us. Uh, I said, Aleph Swick, uh, and uh, he talks about Beatriz Viterbo, that was the uh, woman loved uh, by the poet uh, in, uh, in, in, in Aleph, and, uh, and then he mentioned Zia Otto, beloved Zia Otto, uh, and then he gives me some advice. Uh, he says, sorry, it's in Italian, he says, uh, uh, don't breathe nerve gas on public benches, he was referring to the Salisbury poisoning. Uh, don't elect an idiot, I will not tell you uh, who was he referring. Don't uh, sell assault rifles to disturb youths. And you see some social criticism, and of course, uh, choose your parents carefully. That is something that uh, you can't do. And then he goes on to James Fraser and the Golden Bow. Uh, great inspiration for uh, Thomas Elliot, uh, our friend uh, Kantik, uh, Kantik Gosh. And I was going to LA today, PS. 
and he recommend me to not get shot or uh, in case uh, I was in the middle of a shooting uh, to, be, to be careful. And uh, he concludes this took some time, but it's an interesting thing. Um, we were both fond uh, when we were in high school of uh, uh, metamagical games uh, by Douglas of Stutter. And uh, there was a famous story in which he mentioned 1453, that is the, uh, the year of the fall of Constantinopolis. And it's a prime number and is a prime also if you read it in reverse. And of Stutter came to the University of Trieste in 1986, May 1986. We were there listening to him and uh, Sandro was uh, drawing a caricature of him. And then uh, we go down and start talking with him. Uh, and I saw him that surreptitiously goes to his back uh, and uh, sticks the caricature in his jacket. Uh, so that night of Satter went back and found the drawing of, uh, of Sandra and this. So this was just to give you a little window um, in uh, some of our uh, many, many years of interactions. And these are the <laughs> last pictures I, I took of him the day we saw each other at a rush. And with this, I give it to, to Stefano for his talk. Stefano. OK. I'm... OK, I'm Stefano De Gironcoli, and I was uh, actually a colleague, uh, Sandro's colleague at the university. And uh, actually, these are the are the places where Sandro, I mean, is bo was born in, uh, in Udine, not far from here, uh, graduated uh, with Baldereschi, as myself and uh, Nicola, a few years uh, in, uh, in Trieste. Baldereschi was uh, uh, commuting between Trieste and Lausanne, and Lausanne actually uh, would be also one of the places where uh, Sandro uh, worked. From Trieste, he went uh, to uh, Kiel University, uh, and then moved uh, to for, for PhD, then moved to Lausanne, uh, working with Roberto Carr and colleagues, uh, and then uh, got positions both in uh, uh, UK and, uh, and Trieste, and so started commuting. And so for most of uh, uh, the last, uh, I don't know, 20, 30 years he was commuting between uh, uh, Trieste and, uh, and uh, London. Uh, okay, I didn't uh, uh, work uh, explicitly uh, with, uh, I mean, we, we didn't publish anything together, we, but we, whenever he was here, uh, we discussed stuff. He was uh, updating me about uh, what he was doing. We were planning, or I mean, wishing to do something together, but we are a bit different uh, interest, etc. so this didn't happen. Uh, one thing that uh, in the back in the days uh, was uh, not very clear was how to deal with, uh, I mean, making simulation in, in, uh, in a metallic system with uh, a reasonable number of k-points uh, and how you can uh, do that, so that we are talking about 30, 30 years ago and in an efficient way. And uh, uh, of course, uh, one idea, idea is to introduce some temperature, and, uh, uh, but uh, introducing the temperature spoiled the, the results, especially if you want to do it uh, with the machines that you had at that time. Uh, so you need to do very few K points, uh, and, or, and therefore very large uh, temperature. Uh, one thing that, uh, uh, I mean, Sandro was exploring uh, was uh, the fact that actually uh, we are all interested in computing, okay, temperature or smearing, they look uh, the same, so they have similar properties. Uh, so we are interested in the low temperature uh, result, uh, but what we can afford is something uh, that is uh, uh, high, uh, high temperature because this allows to use a few K points. Uh, what you can calculate is the internal energy, or you can calculate uh, the free energy. Both uh, are significantly wrong. Uh, so what one can do is actually take the same <coughs> sum, the, the average of them, and then this is, uh, 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 gives you a much more stable and, uh, and uh, uh, close to the limit that you are interested in result. Uh, 
This is something that he was uh, uh, playing around uh, in, the, in the 90s. And uh, then the, the problem is uh, that uh, uh, if you take this uh, uh, semi-sum, uh, this is non-variational. So the force that you can compute from the variational uh, problem are not consistent with the, with the corrected, uh, with this. Uh, so the, the, the energy is uh, accurate, uh, but uh, the forces uh, are not consistent. And uh, OK, but he was uh, saying, OK, but these are metals. Uh, what you are missing are uh, effects, uh, a few electrons around the Fermi energy, how much uh, this could be uh, important. Uh, so maybe it's not, uh, it's not so important. So I think uh, uh, then the solution, a more elegant solution, involves uh, some modified uh, uh, smearing. But uh, uh, this is not the point. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, he was always very uh, happy of uh, uh, and interested in uh, making uh, new, uh, I mean, trying to solve uh, uh, relevant problems uh, and uh, uh, even doing something that is not formally correct, uh, but uh, uh, give you some insight and then maybe th things can be fixed. Uh, but I mean, don't be scared of, uh, of, uh, of doing something that maybe is not fully, uh, fully uh, uh, tight. Uh, uh, and uh, so I mean, uh, one memory that I have of him is that, I mean, we were discussing about type of physics or type of uh, approach that you may have uh, on your, uh, uh, on your uh, work, uh, and he was saying that, uh, okay, you can play uh, attack or you can play defense. I mean, you can try to be, stay safe uh, or make uh, bold moves, uh, and I definitely I think he was uh, in the, in the Category of people that make bold moves uh, and uh, have good insight, uh, and uh, and then uh, things will be. I mean, if something good come come from that, uh, uh, as for instance, uh, I mean, we had, uh, and there will be Gabor again. We'll talk, and other people will talk about uh, this machine learning, learn on the fly, etc. I mean, in the past 20 years, uh, we had uh, several discussion. Uh, dinner discussion about uh, what were the problem left, uh, and each time uh, uh, he solved the previous problem, but there were new problems arising, but this never stopped him to, to think that uh, he was going forward. Uh, so that's uh, what I wanted to say. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you, Nicola, in particular, for having shown this beautiful uh, uh, email message. I think that summarizes really perfectly, as far as I'm concerned, the, uh, what, what, uh, what Sandra was. I mean, this combination of, uh, you know, passion for art, for beauty, for, uh, for, uh, for um, you know, literature, and, and, and so on and so forth. I think we're trying to describe Sandra with, uh, with, with jargon that has been used so far in the last session. I think Sandra was really lying, I mean, probably six or seven standard deviations away from the average scientist, from, from the average of us, including myself, certainly. And I was trying actually to, to try uh, to, to, to identify something that uh, uh, could, could really define what it was. I think what really characterized him was this passion for beauty. Beauty in all its manifestations, whether it was art, it was a book, it was, uh, it was a movie. Uh, and whether, of course, it was science. And so I've been asked here to say a few words about his contribution to science. Uh, he was an outstanding scientist, of course. Uh, this is a picture we took uh, uh, probably a year and a half ago. Uh, when you can see the wine. He loved the wine, by the way. Uh, so this is probably, I, cho I chose just a couple of papers just to, uh, you know, uh, uh, give a flavor of uh, actually the way I actually met him, I got to know him, because that was a time in which we were both uh, uh, beginning our careers, it was the early 90s, uh, we were both uh, graduating, getting our PhDs, and both starting a career in the field of initio molecular dynamics, which is really the beginning. Uh, for those of you, uh, the younger members here in the audience, that was a time in which uh, a few years after Roberto Cari and Michele Parinello in the mid-80s mid started this uh, uh, 
you know, new enterprise of uh, 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 um, uh, being able to do ab initio molecular dynamics uh, uh, for realistic systems. Uh, uh, of course, their beginning was just uh, 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 um, a toy model, but in the, in the, at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, we're really starting to, uh, uh, to, to use and implement uh, uh, these techniques into uh, software that could be used to solve uh, practical uh, and interesting problems. And I think this is probably the first example of a really large-scale simulation. Of course, you shouldn't be a, I mean, 100 atoms at the time was really huge by, by any standard. Uh, so this is the first time that actually a chemical reaction was, uh, was looked at, uh, uh, chemical dissociation of a chlorine uh, molecule on top of a, of a silicon surface. Of course, this was really st starting to uh, hit at very relevant uh, uh, technological uh, issues, which uh, our field was at the time still struggling with. I mean, we're still struggling with developing uh, simple methodologies that could describe, say, bulk systems, uh, crystal structures, but that was really the first time, at least as far as I remember, in which uh, this methodology, this, the methodology that our community is now using, uh, you know, on a daily basis, uh, 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 were starting to be used for process that really had a strong technological interest. In this particular case, it was uh, etching the physics of semiconductors, the, uh, the engineering of semiconductors, conductors as, as well. And you can see here the, uh, well, I don't want to go through the details. I mean, you actually run a number of simulations uh, uh, looking at different uh, uh, starting conditions for the Cl2 molecule. And you actually managed to get insight into the electronic structure of the process from the, uh, uh, the, the time in which the molecule is still associated to the time in which the molecule dissociates at the surface and forms the bonds. I mean, now these figures are probably very, you know, common. Uh, you find them in any uh, paper. But at the time, that was really a, a breakthrough, I, 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 I must say. Let me also say something about the, uh, a bit of an historical uh, remark. I mean, uh, Sandra was also the kind of person who liked to make uh, connections and network with everyone. At the time, uh, the community of Abinitia Molecular Dynamics was, was quite polarized. There was the group in, in the UK uh, doing primarily born oppenheimer uh, uh, Abinitia Molecular Dynamics, and the group in Trieste doing primarily Carparinello uh, type uh, molecular dynamics. Uh, Sandra was actually uh, jumping between the two. He was probably the only one who was mastering both techniques uh, 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 quite, quite, uh, in a quite deep way. Let me mention a second, uh, oh, sorry. Yes, this is actually a movie that uh, uh, Sandra and colleagues, uh, I think I have to uh, probably click on it. Oh, oh, it's, it's going, there's no sound. Okay, it's a pity because the soundtrack was actually uh, 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 Bach's uh, Brandenburg Concerto. So again, it shows the uh, you know the interest that uh, uh, Sandro had. That's okay. That's okay. It's only it's only music. It's actually short. You see the credits here, and you see then a movie of the uh, precisely of the uh, trajectories that uh, uh, that uh, led to the results that were described in the uh, in the paper I, j I just showed. So this is chlorine uh, impinging with an energy of one electron volt into the surface of silicon. Again, these kind of movies were uh, are, c are common nowadays, but at the time it was really shocking. I mean, I remember the first time I saw it, I was really shocked to see that uh, with, with our techniques we would actually generate insight. Uh, and not only insight, but uh, I, I guess you... Uh, probably all agree that this is actually a beautiful piece of, uh, you know, uh, 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 of work just in terms of pure beauty. Mm. Um, let me actually just mention now a second uh, uh, paper. Uh, this is actually cl much closer to uh, what I was doing at the time. This is uh, uh, related to the problem of the uh, graphite to diamond uh, conversion, of which I've been working. That was actually my first paper in the field of Abinicio, uh, in the, the Abinicio community. I was trying to uh, look at something which is a rather academic problem, uh, looking at the uh, transition between graphite of, to diamond, which is a very well known, uh, uh, even from a technological point of view, uh, process. Uh, we're trying to understand essentially the microscopic details of the, of the transition. To a large extent, an academic, uh, an academic uh, uh, problem, which, however, took a substantial amount of computer time because it was actually, I think this simulation was, if I remember correctly, 48 carbon atoms. Uh, um, and that was the, uh, 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 the best I could do. And then, a couple of months later, sorry, I skipped this. Sorry. All right, sorry. A couple of months later, here comes uh, Sandro with a simulation which is, of course, uh, orders of magnitude better than what I was doing. Essentially, he was looking not just at the, at the graphite to diamond transition, which is 
course of sort of academic interest, but it was looking at the reverse transition, the transition of uh, diamond into graphite, which had instead uh, enormous technological importance, because that was a time in which the first uh, examples of diamond growth by chemical vapor deposition were published, and so there was this problem that because the temperature was high, the surface of diamond uh, was actually graphitizing uh, during, during the growth. So there were graphite islands in, the, uh, in these samples. Uh, so it was extremely important from a technological point of view, but it was, of course, also a, a tremendous tour de force from a, from a computational point of view. As you can see now, he's dealing with uh, 288 atoms plus vacuum. And to do that, uh, he actually developed uh, a code. I'm not sure. I mean, I think there are actually people that have been using this code, but he was actually the developer, the first developer of Lautrec, uh, the code that he developed when he was in Lausanne. It's actually uh, Sandro. So not only was interested in the application, but also did important, very important contributions into the, uh, into the development of software. That was the first, I guess, massively parallel uh, code for, for, a Carparinello, for a Carparinello method. And uh, as I said, I, uh, I see. A while, I wanted to uh, close by showing this uh, picture. This one here. This is actually taken from the uh, 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 the chlorine on silicon paper. I like this picture because I think it really summarizes what Sandra was. Uh, uh, this is a beautiful example of science. You see uh, electronic structure, you see charge density. But I think nobody would be surprised to see this piece of art in a, in a contemporary art museum, isn't it? Uh, it's really beautiful. I love it. So I think this really summarizes his, his, his passion for, uh, for beauty. So I sort of represent a pretty large group of people who had uh, um, who studied at uh, the materials department at the University of Trieste and, and uh, who were really truly inspired by the <coughs> um, by the overwhelming enthusiast enthusiasm that uh, Sandro had for science and for computational material science in particular. Uh, Sandro actually uh, got his second PhD at the Department of Materials in Trieste. Yes, he had two PhDs, and later he became a faculty member until, uh, until his death. The very first time I met Sandro was at the eighth edition of this conference at the <clears throat> in uh, January 1997, and I was still undergraduate, and I was introduced to this uh, young scientist literally while he was playing guitar at the poster session, while discussing science, while also having fun with his group of friends that were shown at the beginning. And uh, this uh, meeting for me was uh, literally life-changing for uh, many things, for many aspects. Um, uh, the very first one is that after a few months, uh, we became friends. Uh, after a few months, he uh, recommended me to my future um, uh, PhD advisor who accepted me, and he's actually the director of this, uh, um, of this edition of the Total Energy. So this is one uh, very important thing that I, own, uh, I owe to, uh, to Sandro. So uh, coming to science, uh, so this has been shown already, but those years, uh, I'm talking about 1997-2000, uh, so Sandro was uh, making his first uh, footsteps on what later became his triangle trail uh, that uh, he kept doing uh, over and over. And at that time, one of the things he was uh, studying and was involved in, among many others, was uh, the, 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 this field that was emerging and it was a hot uh, scientific topic at the time, was molecular self-assembly at surfaces. Uh, um, and uh, really, this is uh, a seminal work in that area. And uh, it's one of the most cited paper in uh, uh, Sandro's uh, publication rank, uh, list. And really, they, um, with his simulation, uh, they were able to uh, nail down 
the uh, physical origin of the formation of these uh, um, ordered structures at the atomic level. And you see, uh, modeling showed that hydrogen bonds cause the observed self-assembly. Sounds obvious now, but uh, at that time it was not so obvious. And actually, he demonstrated this. From, from that time, over the next 10, 15 years, he kept working on this idea and uh, elaborating it further, and to the point that he added an intermediate stop along the uh, triangular trail that was St Stuttgart, where we met again scientifically. And the reason for Stuttgart is that uh, he developed at the time uh, long-standing collaboration with uh, uh, the group of Klaus Kern. He uh, is a pioneer of that field. And uh, over that period of time, uh, between 2000 to, to now, I would say, to, um, some years ago, uh, he became a world, uh, Sandro became a, a leading figure in this field. Uh, he gave many contributions explaining complex and uh, subtle and very important um, um, uh, problems in, in surface science. So here again, just two examples. Uh, again, working on this concept of uh, um, uh, hydrogen bonding and the importance of hydrogen bonding at surfaces, uh, something he explained with his hands. I remember he was explaining this chirality uh, of, um, um, of, 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 of one di in one dimensional um, uh, hydrogen bond and assemblies, uh, uh, explaining that uh, this with his fingers, depending if they, if they met this way. Or the, or the other way, I, I'm not able to do it, but, but you actually see it there. And uh, he developed this even further. He, he really uh, was able to explain even much more complicated situation, like this one, in which there were phase transition going to, uh, in, in two-dimensional over molecular overlayers, uh, the develop, developing uh, open structure, and as a function of temperature, uh, more closed till to the highest uh, density. Another thing I, um, I learned from him, and uh, that he was really a peculiar um, um, uh, quality of Sandro, was his gift for communicating science uh, with really original thinking and uh, creativity and enthusiasm. And I, th I thought that this uh, cover of the, this cover paper in Angevant at Chemie somehow <coughs> summarized this. Uh, and you see, there's, there's so much Sandro in it. There is. Uh, <coughs> There is the London street life. There is the movie uh, because of the molecular dynamics. Uh, there is the simulated STM images. Uh, there are molecules who uh, sort of uh, pair. There is the dimerization of alanine on the surface. But not only they pair. You see, they, uh, the, uh, this, this is a, a pair of, 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 of people, a couple. Uh, actually dancing, so esta noche quiera el tango on the surface, and this is another example, light camera action. And, uh, and this was the sort of things that, uh, uh, that Sandro liked to explain. So these were the, the puzzles he saw on the, uh, on the microscope, well, that uh, the colleagues showed him on the microscope, and, uh, and this was uh, uh, really, oops, yes, uh, the, the, he provided the, the, the molecular understanding of why this happened, this pairing, and the molecules changing the, the structure and locking into uh, pairs that then formed the left or the right, uh, the right uh, uh, chains on the surface. So, so I, I wanted to sort of bring my experience of Sandro's life in this uh, bunch of, of time, and I'm... Here's a wonderful picture of him also uh, explaining the soft skills that he had and the way in which he um, used the soft skill to uh, succeed in, in science and to have such a good network and connection. So. Appreciate the difficulty of switching from a current research talk to, uh, to this, uh, but I will try to do that by, I think the best way to do it is to give you a, a further flavor of, of Sandro's enthusiasm um, for, um, for his atomistic work. And um, 
he really he introduced me to Trieste, he introduced me to, to this uh, community, introduced, introduced me to, to thinking about molecular dynamics. And uh, I want to tell you about his, one of his passions. He called, he called it Learn on the Fly, some of the students and postdocs involved in it. Um, it all started uh, actually before I got to know him. Uh, in, uh, that's uh, the title of an, MR, uh, an MRS bulletin, 197. Um, there's novel scheme for accurate MD simulation of large systems. And it's a great title. It's a, it's a title I would have loved to give to any of my papers. And, 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 and we're still working on novel schemes for uh, accurate, uh, accurate MD. Um, I got to know him uh, when I came back from the US uh, and uh, got a postdoc in Cambridge and immediately uh, was introduced to him by Mike Payne. And, uh, and started working on uh, developing his ideas in this. And I want to point you, and, and the culmination of the first, first milestone of that is the second paper, uh, where, where the name Learn on the Fly was, uh, was in the title already. Um, I, want, I would like you to read this uh, highlighted uh, sentence. Um, it, ex it expressed his very deep um, vision at the time, which I which I took over and, uh, and completely subscribed to. And it says, we take the view that there is no feasible analytic form for the classical force, um, for the classical force model can we produce simultaneously the reference model's accuracy and the transferability, since these two properties pose opposite requirements on the force model's complexity. Okay, so if you think back to um, the research talks, that has changed, um, and, and Sandro, has changed, but we were all thinking, following him, uh, that um, machine learning was nowhere on our radar, uh, that this can't be done. Um, and, and the second picture is, is really his, his solution. He loved that figure. Essentially, what's, what that figure represents is, a, is an MD trajectory at each point of which you have a very simple functional form, a pair potential. And its parameters keep changing because, because the real quantum mechanics locally is different. And you inform those changes by doing quantum calculations, say, every 10 steps. And that, was, that, that, that idea filled my world at the time. That, that, that all came from Sandra of, of thinking about MD as, as information, information transfer from quantum mechanics into the trajectory. And the end of that paper, the, the figure on the bottom uh, right, uh, which is a figure of a crack. And again, that uh, fracture was, was really one of Sandro's passions. And I, I got to see, I got to understand that much later, but that is really the, the prototypical problem for which these ideas and this method is, is perfectly suited. And, and really, the only way to do the fracture problem was was something like this. And that is because you need about 100,000 atoms to set up the system, but the bond breaking that goes, that's going on is, is exquisitely quantum mechanical. I'm going to show you a couple of movies that, um, that, that, that I and other students and postdocs working with Sandro have made. He all loved these movies and, um, and showed it, uh, looked at it many times. So, um, so what you see here is, is that silicon crack which for the first time we were able to simulate with, um, with Learn on the Fly. What you see on the top, what, once I started, let me start it and then talk over it. Um, oh, uh, yeah. So the top is what you'd get if you have a classical potential and don't update it. Um, and eventually it'll really go wrong. What you see on the bottom is the blue atoms are the ones where quantum mechanically computed information is, is being incorporated into the system and that gives qualitatively and quantitatively the right uh, behavior. Whereas what happens in the top is, is lots and lots of defect production and, and that's really not, not what happens experimentally. If you crack silicon carefully, it really cleaves. Um, and so this, this, this made him extremely excited and, and, and all of us thought that this is really the best thing in the world. Um, and then, um, as you were playing with this, um, this is uh, going to be a similar uh, movie. Now, just the uh, 
the, co the combined one, the learn on the fly with the red atoms, quantum mechanical, and the yellow atoms staying uh, classical. But um, what's happening here is as, as you do this very, very slowly, because you can, because you can afford to, the largest quantum calculation we need to do was 100 atoms, is you see that step. It was actually one of, uh, uh, it was James Kermode who noticed it, the student in Cambridge and later a postdoc with Sandro. Um, and, and those steps always occur stepping down in this orientation, only one way. And, and we all thought this was uh, sort of very cute, uh, and, and we didn't realize uh, the importance of this. Sandro realized the importance of this. And he was the connection uh, to an experimental group, which uh, was once we started talking with them, um, and Sandro was the link between uh, the modelers and the experimentalists, resulted in, uh, I guess, what is the highlight of this piece of work, is this paper in Nature uh, in 2008. Um, Sandro uh, went to talk to the experimentalists, um, uh, a, a guy in Israel, um, Dov Sherman, and asked him, have you ever seen anything like this? And he showed him these movies. And Dov uh, sort of scratched his head and, uh, and said, well, there are these samples in my drawer from five years ago, and, and Sandro loved telling this story, uh, which they put away because they couldn't explain what was going on. And those samples are shown there. This is an optical uh, image of the fracture surface on the, the top left here. That's the rig in which you do the fracture. And, and they just couldn't explain what those, what those ridges were. And, and or, this team organized uh, and, and convened and organized uh, by Sandro, uh, they managed to connect um, these two things. So basically the claim is that, that these little steps um, are the origin of those ridges, the, the edges of that V. And we managed to connect, do something very rare, connect uh, uh, the breaking of a single bond, or the rotation of a bond and then the subsequent breaking to a macroscopically experimentally observable phenomena, uh, which uh, are those ridges. It says, it, at, you can think it's a bit tenuous, but Sandro was persistent. He, was, he, he, he loved this system so much, um, he went on to, to really prove this, uh, that this was the connection. Um, if you stick a boron atom into the system, this was, uh, now I wasn't involved in this work, it was uh, James Kermode and uh, Gian Pietro Moras. Um, if you stick a, a boron atom into it, then that um, bond break, that bond rotation and step is much, much more uh, prevalent. It's, it's, it, that boron atom really induces that. And they managed to uh, correlate the density of boron atoms with the propensity for stepping and the appearance of those ridges, uh, which, uh, which really conclusively proved that this was going on. Um, the next, uh, uh, I, I went on to do other things, uh, but, uh, but, but Sandro's persistence uh, with fracture, uh, he, he really be, uh, was the expert in, uh, in modeling brittle fracture in its all shape or form. This was another one of his favorite systems. This is a piece of silicon in which you inject uh, hydrogen gas at high pressure. Uh, and you can control the depth to which the hydrogen uh, is injected, and it's actually a way of it's a, it's a it's a way that's you, it's something that's used in manufacturing uh, silicon wafers because you um, you inject this hydrogen uh, to a certain depth and the silicon cleaves uh, as a very large flat uh, uh, sheet off of that uh, the, the bulk and and Sandro wanted to understand how this happens microscopically uh, and he says it's the first now corro chemomechanical corrosive fracture simulation in which those hydrogen atoms dissociate and thereby advance the crack at a much, much smaller uh, load than, than, than the material uh, would break otherwise. Um, this, uh, the, the, the last uh, piece of work is, is more recent and, and really represents, in some sense, giving up that early view that potentials cannot be complex. Um, and that's... Um, and, and, and although Sandro loved uh, the original idea of learn on the fly, when, when it was time to go beyond it, 
he did. And that's, that's something that I keep thinking about and uh, in, in admiration of him. So, so he, he, he got into the fray of, of, of using the machine learning techniques to do the same thing that he loved, fracture and enhancing uh, MD simulations to bring in that quantum information. These are two examples of, of his most of more, more recent work. This is a, a piece of silica, a, a much more complex system than anything that uh, we did earlier. And, um, and they were able to study silica fracture. Uh, the, on, the, on the bottom right, uh, again, uh, more recent work uh, on, uh, on, on, on developing machine learn models for nickel clusters. Uh, we gave up on clusters ourselves, they were too hard. Um, Sandro assembled a, a crack team of uh, postdocs and students and, uh, and showed that, uh, that these clusters are also uh, accessible. Um, before I hand over to Arash, I would like to show you uh, one, the, the, last, the last movie that he showed me. Um, it's, uh, it's not actually, uh, well, it is physics, but it is, um, he spent uh, ages uh, looking at it. I'm Let's see if that works. So this, this is spent three hours looking at this, and the time last time we met, he insisted that I spend fifteen minutes looking at it, and the the, the, the smile on his face of, of the, the beauty of the world that it does that, that you can do things like that is uh, is what uh, what remains with me. Gosh. Can everyone, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Uh, Sandro was uh, one of the three founding directors of the Thomas Young Center, the London Center for Theory and Simulation of Materials, or the TYC for short. Uh, and he served continuously uh, in that role since the foundation in autumn 2006. Uh, during that 12-year period, uh, TYC flourished as an umbrella for research and education uh, in theory and simulation of materials at, in, in London uh, at the four London universities of King's, Imperial, UCL, and Queen Mary's. Um, today, the TYC represents over 100 research groups, over 500 researchers uh, from the departments of physics, chemistry, materials, uh, earth sciences, mathematics, engineering, um, at these four universities. Now, successful cross-departmental networks and centers are rare in themselves, but successful cross-institutional and cross-departmental uh, networks are even rarer and very, very precious. And the success of the TYC was uh, due in no small measure to Sandro's unique personality. Uh, people have already talked about his warmth, his humanity, his wisdom, his generosity of spirit, and the esteem uh, in which he was held by, by his colleagues. Um, his breadth of scientific knowledge and interest uh, was one of the things that really helped bring together this very diverse community uh, in London uh, and to make lasting relationships between the individuals in that community. Um, together with the other two founding directors, Mike Finnis, who's the chair of this workshop, and Mike Gillen, uh, Sandra really created a, an environment in London where collaboration trumped uh, competition, uh, where researchers felt connected with one another, um, and where education of the next generation was really at the forefront of, of the mission for the center. Um, and 
I think very importantly, and most importantly, uh, this was all done with a great sense of fun. Uh, Sandro, you know, always loved to have, have fun. The word fun would always appear in any conversation that you had with Sandro. His uh, joie de vivre was infectious, um, as was his mischievous sense of humor, and the almost childlike uh, enthusiasm and wonder with which he devoured knowledge and new experience. Um, unlike most children, certainly unlike my child, uh, he had a very keen awareness of the preciousness of the present. Uh, and he'd always have a camera close to hand to record snapshots of the moments that he was experiencing. Uh, most recently with a, a Fujifilm X100S of which he was very proud and about which he could tell you all the technical details for hours, it seemed. Um, in fact, I've never met anyone with Sandro's capacity for uh, conversation and appetite for conversation. Uh, what should have been a five-minute chat would somehow turn into several hours of talking, after which he'd probably persuade you to go for a drink, and then dinner, and then he'd crack out, crack out a couple of cigars. And, you know, this was just the gravitational pull of his personality. Um, when you were talking to him, he was always present, always in the moment. Um, you never felt he had somewhere else to go, a message to check on his phone, someone else to attend to. Um, and the conversation could really go anywhere. He was equally happy talking about science, art, music, poetry, philosophy, or the latest sort of technological gadgets that had come out. I mean, he was always an early adopter of gadgetry. Um, I, I first met Sandro in 2000 in Cambridge, where he was a, a frequent uh, visitor. And uh, to me, this sort of very enigmatic figure was definitely seemed uh, cut from a different cloth to the usual theoretical uh, physicist that I'd, that I'd met. Uh, and he made a very immediate and memorable impression on me with a story about how Neapolitans, uh, like their espresso served uh, piping hot, uh, the Neapolitan slang phrase that he told me begins with three C's, um, but it's too rude to repeat here. I'll let you, uh, I'll let you uh, look that up yourself. Some of the Italians in the audience might even know what it is. Um, a few years uh, later, uh, Sandro had a pretty direct influence on my life. It was September 2006. Uh, Nicole already showed some photos from this, uh, this birthday symposium for Alfonso uh, Baldareschi, uh, where I bumped into him. Um, and at that time I was a postdoc and Sandro was very enthusiastically telling me about this new thing in London called TYC, which was uh, founded sort of that very month. Um, and that uh, the London universities were about to sort of expand activity in theory and simulation materials by making lots of faculty appointments uh, over the next few years and that I should really have a look at this. Uh, so, you know, he persuaded me into, into looking into it, into applying, and, you know, that chance encounter with Sandro in 2006 and his thoughtfulness in sort of telling me about this uh, is what set in motion my move to London. Uh, the following year and my deep and continued connection with both him and, and with the TYC. Um, you know, in, if you think about it, one of Sandro's lasting legacies in London is you know, his role in the expansion of, of uh, theory and simulation activity there. Uh, so, for example, at King's College London, you know, in 2006, there were three theory and simulation of materials faculty members uh, in the Department of Physics, and that's gone from three to over ten now, uh, including people like Tony Paxton, Mark van Schilfgaard, Francesca Balletto, Nicola Bonini, Cedric Weber, who's, who's here and gave a talk yesterday, and George Booth. Um, and in fact, you know, Sandra really understood the importance of connections and connecting people. Um, he always seemed to, have, to know everyone. He seemed to have worked with everyone. And, and, and you, know, you look at his publication list, and actually you realize why he had over 200 co-authors on his publication. So, you know, if, if we were to think about a Sandro index in term, in, instead of an Erdos index, I think there wouldn't be anyone in this room who has a Sandro index more than three. Um, he was an avid supporter of CCAM and Psyche and of the TYC's role in, in strengthening those uh, networks and centers. He was the driving force uh, behind the establishment in 2012 of the UK's second node of CCAM, 
uh, the JC Maxwell node that involves the TYC universities, Oxford and Cambridge. He was one of the founders of the UK's Materials and Molecular Modeling Hub, which is a new UK network for um, uh, materials modeling and high performance computing associated with materials modeling. Um, and he was also uh, an enthusiastic supporter uh, um, an encourager of TYC initiatives that provided opportunities for young researchers in particular, uh, including a mobility program for junior researchers in, in, in London and uh, strong support for ASESMA, which I think we'll hear about uh, a bit later, the uh, African School of Electronic Structure Methods and Applications. Heracles of Athens said, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Sandro wove so much richness into the fabric of the lives of so many. Despite uh, his tragic passing, I strongly believe he will live on in our hearts, thoughts, and actions. Rest in peace, my friend. <clears throat> there will be a um, memorial event, a memorial symposium for Sandro, uh, 30th and 31st of May, 2019. So this is just to save the date announcement. There'll be more details uh, available uh, soon. Um, uh, it should be advertised on the PSYCH and CCAM mailing list, so you, sh you should all hear about it in, in due course. So just wanted to put that out now so everyone's aware. <laughs>